I've never been this productive on my Mac in the past year. Everything I think, like opening a new app, switching tabs, or finding something, is it's magic. It's like mind control. But actually there is nothing magic. I'm using four tools and I'm going to break down my setup step by step, how I use it, why I use it, so that at the end of this video you also feel like you have superpower. Without the blots, I promise. All the configuration you'll see in this video is available on my .file repository. The link is in the description. With that being said, let's go. Level zero, keyboard. The first thing you need to understand is that you need to throw this, and it is more this. This is a tool which is super slow. And don't get me started on widescreen. I feel like I'm running a marathon here. Don't realize how slow it can be to click through different things. An easy way to figure out this is to put your mouse on the other side of its usual place. This is going to be so annoying and believe me, you're going to figure out how to do it faster with your keyboard shortcuts. Level one, freeing up screen space. So you just started your Mac and you have this ugly dock thing over there, which is literally taking a lot of your screen space. As developers, we mainly spend time in the editor and in the browser and having this extra vertical space is really valuable. We mostly read stuff like this, not like this. Like this, not like this. Not like this. So we will move the dock on the left and we are going to auto hide it. And also, of course, clean up everything you don't need. I know, it feels empty and alone. How do I switch between applications, you may ask? And don't even think about the comment tab. This is just a carousel joke. Level two, shortcut on apps. There are multiple solutions to handle application shortcuts, even building to macOS. But the one I'm proposing is HT because it's open source and it supports .file configuration. So you have all your configuration of your shortcut in a one file that you can get. If you have Homebrew, which suppose you have, because it's a package manager, you can install SKHT by doing a brew install SKHT. Check the readme of the installation as you will need two small configuration to finalize your setup. The next thing you need is to create your configuration file. Here, for the sake of the demo, I'll create three shortcuts. One for the browser, one for my terminal, and one for my code editor. Now, if I'm using the given shortcut, I can easily switch between applications. I typically use the first letter of the context slash application. So Alt B for me is browser, Alt C is code, and Alt T is terminal. Now you have a pretty decent workflow management to switch between applications. Let's get into the real meat. Level 3, Windows Management. An amazing tool to help you manage Windows is Yabai, which is a tiling window manager. And a tiling window manager is a tool that helps you never think about Windows setup again and give you the flexibility to quickly split space into different setup in an organized way. In short, you say goodbye to massive floating window all around. Again, you can install Yabai to Umbrew, but to make it work, you'll have to disable system integrity protection. Why is that needed? And the implication of these are well explained in the wiki of Yabai. Pragmatically, it's pretty easy. You need to restart your MacBook in recovery mode, run one command in the terminal, and you're done. After that, you need to configure your scripting addition. Again, if you're lost, check out their wiki. I'm going to cover the main part of the configuration files, which is the .yabai.rc and the .skhd.rc for the shortcut. Another quick tool that will be interesting to install is Jenky Borders. Again, open source, and it's a lightweight tool to give you a cue about which window I currently focus. You can install again using brew and there is nothing much uh, by default you had to the configuration. On to the Yabai RC file. The default Yabai RC file configuration is pretty good. So just be aware that you can configure a lot of things like padding between each window, the space between up and down of the window. You can also disable Yabai on specific application. Typically I do this for macOS setting and a few other things that are not designed 
to be a full screen window. For that, you just use Yabai M rule add and you put the application name. For now, I will leave it the rest like this and I'll come back to the main features right after because this shortcut is actually what's the most interesting. So now you can basically add a shortcut for any Yabai command, which means uh, zooming on a specific window changing the focus, I use the Vim direction. So if you see, if I open a new window on my browser, you'll see it going next slide nicely. And now I can use the shortcut to easily switch between one or the other window. I can split horizontally if I prefer to do it so, or zoom temporarily uh, on one to read an article. Again, everything with the keyboard, it's blazingly fast. And you know what's also blazingly fast? just liking this button and hitting subscribe. You know, it helped me and if you already got value from this video, everybody's happy. All right, so we have Yabai up and running with the default configuration. But to be honest, the most interesting feature is actually not the Windows management, it's the spaces management. So let's go to the next level, level four spaces. So here is my optic. I don't think you need more screens for developers. You need just more spaces. All right, that sounded a bit wrong, but I mean the macOS feature, spaces. And to be honest, I never managed to get really productive with it until using Yabai for the reason that you quickly get lost. And there is two major problems I have in the past with these native features that where is the app I put in which space? As switching space, switching app using the default uh, available shortcut, control arrow, is super slow. The beauty with Yabai is that you can control spaces dynamically. So you can create a default set of space, then you can put a default space for each app. This means you can allocate specific application to go to specific space. And finally, you can still move up from space with just a shortcut and you have a clear understanding where things are. And because you put a shortcut on your application, you can always hit the app shortcut and it will, you know, guide you to the right space. So how does this work? First, you need to get your mission control settings right. So for example, when switching to an application, switch to a space, we open Windows, has to be turned on. Well, let's go by to the Yabai RC and our HDHDRC files. To set up a default number of space, I call a custom script. This script is using a Yabai a space create command. And the neat trick is that I also have a default setup when connecting a second screen. So Yabai will detect when I'm putting another screen and rearrange the specific number space to each screen. If I'm using one screen, usually seven space is enough. And if I'm using two screens, I usually put two other extra spaces on the second screen. To set up a rule for a default space for an application, you will just use another rule, a Yabai M rule, add app to a specific space number. So for instance, now for whenever I open VS Code, you see it will be always on space three. For the rest, let's check out our uh, shortcut in HKDRC. So of course I have some commands to switch space easily. And I have another command shift alt plus the number of space when I want to send a specific application to a given space. So this start to be really powerful now. You can move application between space, which means also button screen. So if you have a second screen and you say, oh, I want to move my notes over there. Well, I just use the application shortcut to focus on my notes. And then I can just do shift alt plus eight where uh, there is a space on the second screen and voila, the application has moved there. Two shortcuts and I move a given application to another screen. I dare you can do it faster. So I know what you're asking, but Mehdi, how do I see which application is running in which space if you start to move them temporarily? Is this everything in your mind? Now, this is where a custom status bar is really helpful. Next level. A level 5 custom status bar. Sketchy bar is a custom bar, again, open source that you can install and display whatever you want and disable or rather hide the default one. But why? Well, how many times did you actually need to go in this menu? Personally, never, or maybe, you know, once or twice a week. So all that space on average is pretty much never you. And I do wonder what we could put in place. Yes, spaces. Again, you can install Sketchy Bar using Umbrew. And once it's done, I would recommend to start from an existing configurations. 
many folks uh, share their setup on GitHub and you can copy my configuration from my dot file to put it in your own dot config folder. There is usually a file configuration sketchy bar RC and the plugin. Plugins are bash scripts and you can have them for battery level, date, Wi-Fi, sound, and a more importantly spaces. So now I have a reference which spaces my application are, plus what is the current selected application. Beautiful. All right, level S, God mode. That was it for the Windows workflow management. We use HKEHT for shortcuts, Yabai for Windows style manager, and sketchy bar for a custom bar to help us visualize what's happening in our space. And as a bonus, I want to say that everything else I'm doing with the keyboard is pretty much using Raycast. Raycast is a magic palette for all kinds of action. Many extensions are available built in and you can easily set up shortcuts and custom script. The common one I use is for search files, emojis, launching a specific Git project, or searching for a YouTube video and much more. If you are a productivity nerd and you would like me to do a deep dive on Raycast, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, take care of yourself and your keyboard. Peace.